Good afternoon, and thank you for joining us today for Money Mondays with Melissa. Each month, as you know, on Money Mondays, we make space for conversations with city leaders, state leaders, organizations, and trailblazers. We're fortunate on today to have them give their time to talk about experiences and answer your questions. Now, June marks Pride Month as we celebrate LGBTQIA plus community, marking the anniversary of the Stonewall Riots and the first Pride Parade a few short years later. Now, Chicago has the distinction of having one of the first LGBTQIA plus neighborhoods in the United States in North Halstead. And our city is the founding site of the Society for Human Rights, a very early advocacy group that fought for inclusion. Now from the 1960s until now, brave activists raised awareness and pushed for full inclusion of the LGBTQIA plus community in every walk of life. Now one such hard fought campaign culminated in the Supreme Court's ruling in the Obergefell versus Hodges in 2015 to make marriage equality the law of the land. But here and nationwide, as you know, the fight for full equality is not over. That includes equality of opportunity and the chance for LGBTQIA plus business owners to build something of their own and find success on their own terms. Nationally, LGBTQIA plus businesses contribute more than $1.7 trillion to the U.S. economy each year, according to the National LGBT Chamber of Commerce. Now, we have a wonderful panel of guests who will share their thoughts and experiences as small business owners, advocates, representatives, for small businesses within the LGBTQIA plus community. And I'm excited for you to meet them. Please welcome State Representative Lamont Robinson, Jeremy Holston, Director of LGBT Chamber of Commerce of Illinois, and Angela Barnes, President of the Board of the Center on Halsted and the General Counsel Director of Legal Affairs and Growth Initiatives of City Tech Collaborative. Thank you all so much for being here and let's get right into this wonderful conversation. So I'd like to start this conversation today with a round robin question so that we can learn a little bit about each of you. Can you each tell us a little bit about what Pride and Pride Month means to you, especially in 2021? Representative Robinson, let's start with you. And then after that, we will hear from Director Holston, and then we will hear from President Barnes. Thank you. Treasurer, good to see you. Um, many might not uh, know that uh, you were in my colleague in the General Assembly, and I certainly miss you, uh, but it is certainly glad, to, I'm certainly glad to have you uh, in the Treasurer's office office. Uh, we certainly need allies like you uh, in government. Uh, and so it is so good to see you. And thank you uh, so very much uh, for allowing me this opportunity. A uh, pride for me, uh, particularly being the first uh, member of the LGBT community from the African American community, uh, pride means for me, uh, it's, it's very special because as you know, we have to have folks that show up in our communities. And so for for me, I know that the only reason that uh, I am a general. Representative, we just lost your volume. Representative, we just lost your volume. Can you now hear me? Hear you. Now okay, great. Yes. Uh, and so uh, pride for me 
is, is important. Uh, and it means a lot to me because I realize there are a lot of folks, treasurer, that I stand on their shoulders. The African-American community, specifically the, the Black LGBT community, never really had representation in the General Assembly. And so for me, uh, making sure that we show up uh, in that arena, also making sure that uh, legislatively that we look out for members of the Black LGBT community is extremely important. So really for me, uh, pride is special. I know that I am showing in the LGBT community make represent Black LGBT community. As it relates, folks in our community uh, have really uh, grappled with uh, the uncertainty of the job market, the uncertainty seeing family and friends. Uh, and so this is a surprise for us because this is the first pride that we really have not been able to come together uh, like we once have in previous years. Uh, and the fight for us to get together was not that many years ago. And so uh, for me, this pride is very special for us to be able to get together uh, virtually, uh, we are able to get together in the same that it's going to be a very, very special pride. And so Representative, you with us? Yes, I'm still with you. And this is this is why for me, this year is a special pride year because we have not been able to get together like we have in previous years. Thank you. Perfect. Thank you so much, Representative Robinson. And also a huge thank you to Treasurer Conyers for uh, the invite to be able to be here today. I'm super excited uh, to join in on today's conversation and picking up from where Representative Robinson um, dropped off, again, shows you just how valuable and important this year is that we're really not able to come together to learn, to network, and to develop each other in the ways that we are familiar with. And so, um, However, through all challenges, we continue to move forward through them. Uh, so for me, um, pride um, and what it means to me is really about being able to show up fully um, as a black, as a black gay man in every space that I go and to able to be there um, with full confidence to be my authentic self, um, regardless of wherever I am. And to also to be confident and bold in making sure that I'm being a champion for others who share my same identities or experiences. Um, for this year, um, you know, as Representative Robinson just mentioned, um, this past year was um, incredibly um, difficult for uh, many dis uh, business owners from underrepresented communities, whether black women or LGBTQ owned. Um, so for me and um, our organization here at the chamber, um, Pride this year is really about making sure that we're putting our full power and voice and energy behind championing uh, LGBTQ owned businesses. And so we really want to make sure that as we continue to navigate out of the pandemic and what our sort of new normal will continue to be is that consumers across Illinois and in Chicago are thinking about LGBTQ owned businesses when they go forward and making purchasing decisions and when they go forward and deciding to where to spend their dollars and to where to come together once we get back out into to the community. Um, and I'm sure um, Angela will hopefully be able to tell us all about an incredible place that we'll be able to come together for networking and um, some other great things soon. And so for us, that's what it's about, making sure that people are thinking about LGBTQ owned businesses this Pride Month. And as we continue to move forward and making sure that those businesses, businesses are able to continue employing uh, vibrant, awesome, talented people from our LGBTQ community. Um, yes, thank you, you both. And also thank you, um, Madam Treasurer, for uh, having me here. This is very exciting uh, to have this opportunity to, to speak to all of you. Um, you know, pride, it means um, really the, the, the same thing this year as it has meant for me, you know, since, since I came out. Um, 
I think that, you know, one of the things, however, in 2021 uh, that that is different um, is, is, as has been said before, um, we have been uh, kind of cooped up. Right. And um, and this is the opportunity to get out there and really um, show the richness of of our community um, that we have done in the past. Um, but, you know, we really kind of had to to take um, a break and go vid- virtual uh, instead of being in person last year. Um, I think that this is also um, given um, all of the events, you know, of the past year. This is a wonderful opportunity um, for this year's Pride to really reflect on um, the issues that our community is still facing and the struggles that we still have, um, and to really figure out those ways that that we can collaborate uh, together and uh, move forward. So um, this is, uh, I'm quite frankly, just ecstatic that it's summer um, and just kind of looking forward to to being out and uh, and to being with everyone. Thank you. I also am ecstatic that this is the summer and that we can um, do what we have to do to have a maskless summer and be safe and and have our vaccinations and feel great, right? And be outside and I'm excited as well. So I think this is such an appropriate conversation at this time. Um, So I'm just glad that we were all able to come together. And I think that um, that all three of you were speaking, but it was something that reminded me, you're right, we've been like cooped up for so long. Then it's like, it was only a few years ago that the pride parade began, right? And then now here we go with the pandemic. And so we just wanna be bigger and better, right? Um, Going forward. So definitely looking forward to that in the future. Um, Now, Mr. Holston, Holston, um, I I wanna hear a little bit more about your work at the LGBT Chamber of Commerce of Illinois. I think this is gonna be important for those that are listening small business owners or potential small business owners. Um, Can you tell us about your role um, at at the Chamber of Commerce and how that works with the LGBTQIA plus community, especially for business owners? Sure, thank you. So this year is actually our 25th anniversary. Uh, The Chamber was founded in 1996, initially as the Chicago area gay and lesbian Chamber of Commerce. Uh, Today, as again, in our 25th year, we are a statewide chamber uh, serving nearly 300 member businesses and providing them access to marketing, professional development, advocacy, as well as networking opportunities. Uh, Today, we know that there are about 50,000 LGBTQ business owners across the state of Illinois, um, and we are proud to help those folks um, to access those resources that I mentioned. Um, Our members include uh, a wide range of folks across a wide range of industries, um, from marketing to communications to insurance, including um, awesome businesses, owners like Representative Lamont Robinson, uh, manufacturers, um, marketing, and we some other restaurants and bars and soon to be, we hope to have um, an awesome business owner like Angela, a part of that uh, network as well. Um, but as I mentioned, our resources include networking. And so um, in a good year, um, and hopefully once we're all back to our old sense of normal, um, we traditionally host about 70 events throughout the year. Um, we including our monthly mix and mingle, which is every second Tuesday from 5.30 until seven. Um, these are our premier networking opportunities to come together with other LGBTQ uh, business professionals throughout the city. Um, we also have a number of affinity groups, including a young professionals program, Um, We also have a Black, Latinx, and women's affinity group. Um, Each of these coming together uh, quarterly, again, to provide some networking and professional development to LGBTQ folks at the intersections of these identities. As far as marketing, um, all members, um, including Representative Robinson, um, get the opportunity to um, have a profile on our directory page. And so if you're an LGBTQ business looking for another place to market and promote your business, our directory provides you the outlet to do that. Uh, In addition, we also provide a range of professional development opportunities, um, including a monthly business empowered workshop, where we talk about things about Uh, 
uh, project management essentials, um, risk compliance, and other topics as well. Um, our premier business uh, development program is our LGBTQ Biz Bootcamp. This will be our third year hosting the program for early stage LGBTQ entrepreneurs. In last year's program, we found that 65% identified as Black, 35% identified as Latinx, with, o with over 80% of them identifying as women um, in our LGBTQ community. So we're incredibly proud to be supporting uh, women um, from black and brown communities um, and getting their new businesses off of the ground. And so the next program will be starting in the fall. Um, it's an eight week program where participants put together a business plan, a business pitch deck, they also get a chance to access mentors and get speakers all at no cost. And then at the end of the program, they get to compete for $1,000 to invest into their business. And so um, we'd love to have any other, any folks who think that program might uh, meet, fit their needs. And of course, um, we know Treasurer Conyers, your, your office has all of the money. So um, if you have some, some resources that we can uh, educate people about moving forward, we definitely would love to have access to those. And then finally, the last resource is access to the LGBT Business Enterprise Certification. So this certification mirrors uh, the certification available for minority, women, disabled, and veteran-owned businesses. So the business, business must be 51% or more LGBTQ managed, owned, and controlled. With this certification, LGBTQ-owned businesses are able to use it as an additional tool as they compete for corporate and government contracting opportunities. And so um, we are excited to be the premier partner here in Illinois, um, connecting LGBTQ businesses to that resource, um, to our LGBTQ business uh, bootcamp, as well as our marketing and networking opportunities as well. And so again, um, we'd love to support anyone in getting connected to those resources. Um, thanks to Molson Coors, we actually have some scholarships available to Black and Latinx LGBTQ owned businesses right now to access membership. And so again, if anyone um, would like to tap into that resource, again, we'd love to talk to you about it. So um, that's a little bit about who we are and some of the resources that we offer. So I was thinking as you were speaking, Mr. Holson, I'm certain that people that are listening are like, how do we get in touch with them? Of course, we know there's Google for everything, right? But the advantage of registering for the event, I know there are some that are just viewing it on Facebook Live, which is fine. But when you register for the event, we actually send follow-up information and that will include contact information. And so um, certainly towards the end, we want to provide your contact information and and make certain that those that are interested will have an opportunity because, I mean, my gosh, you mentioned so many great things, um, you know, who wouldn't want to take advantage of that? Um, so really, really great information. Um, now, Ms. Barnes, let's go to you as a small business owner, because you're also the president of the board of the Center on Halsted, one of the nation's best community centers addressing the needs of the LGBTQIA plus community. Can you talk to us about what the Center on Halsted does to support small business owners for those that may not be familiar? Sure, thank you. Um, yeah, for those who aren't familiar um, with the Center on Halsted, uh, just a little bit uh, by way of background, um, the center itself is located on um, Halsted, um, just uh, north of Addison. It is um, a community center at its you know core. It opened its doors in 2007. Um, however, it really has its foundings um, back in the 70s um, when it was known as the uh, Horizon Community Center, um, Community Services, excuse me. Um, it is uh, the Midwest's largest LGBTQ uh, social service agency, um, and it is the Midwest's most comprehensive community center dedicated to advancing uh, community um, and securing health and well being of a lesbian, uh, gay, bisexual, transgender, and queer uh, people in Chicago. So we have more than a thousand, you know, people who really pass through our doors um, every day. And we offer programming uh, just in terms of, you know, businesses, definitely the job training program um, through Silver Fork, which is a culinary 
uh, program that is amazing, um, as well helping to uh, place those individuals that go through that training, um, but also HIV testing, group therapy, um, and then classes and workshops through Cyber Center. So um, the, the center has you know, definitely been around for a long time and is uh, working um, diligently, intentionally um, to make sure that, you know, we are known in all LGBTQ communities. Uh, so geographically, not just the North side, but the South side and the West side. Um, and then to also partner with uh, different groups in, you know, um, on the South side and West side so that, you know, people don't have to necessarily come to the center and in order to take advantage of uh, the offerings that we have. Um, so it, it's definitely something we, you know, partner with, uh, with Jeremy um, on different things. And uh, he's kind of needling me a little bit. I think later in the discussion, I'll, I'll, I'll talk about my business, but I'm not going to talk about it now. So it's... Uh, <laughs> All right. Thank you so much. That is so funny. Um, well, we look forward to hearing more about your business. And um, I want to plug this before I go to the question for our State Representative Robinson. Um, a lot of people know that he's state representative, but a lot of people may not know that he's also a small business owner. And so we thought, what you know, better time than to bring him on than a panel such as this? And what I really appreciate about this conversation, in so many instances, when we talk about Pride Month, um, we certainly talk about equality, but I don't necessarily know if we approach it from a small business perspective. And so what a great conversation on today, just being able to, you know, small businesses, uh, we always say is the backbone of our communities. And so we talk about, of course, people say, of course, it makes sense. You're the money lady, right? The treasurer. But I try to look at things from different perspectives that we may not necessarily look at. And so I definitely appreciate this conversation. So Representative Robinson, small business owner, you are also the first African-American openly LGBTQIA plus person to serve in the Illinois legislature. And I was so honored when I was in Springfield when you joined the legislature. Um, I have a feeling that you know what it's like to be the first or the only, um, something that members um, of this community frequently faced in professional spaces. So tell us about your recent legislation, which is important and some changes legislatively that uh, may have occurred or plan to occur to kind of even the playing field. Sure. Uh, look, Madam Treasurer, thank you again uh, for this this opportunity. And uh, the, the two hats that I wear, uh, number one, I am a small business owner. I have uh, two law state insurance practices, one in Humble Park, one in Bronzeville. Um, I'm also uh, happy to, to report uh, that uh, two of my managers are in the LGBT community. And so for me, it's important uh, that not, not only uh, walk the walk, uh, not only talk the talk, but walk the walk, and that is to make Uh-oh, important topics that we're missing. Representative, hopefully you can hear us. Unmute, let's see if that works. Now. Madam Treasurer? Yes. Okay. So legislatively, okay. I, I need to make sure that I work uh, with some of our uh, uh, internet carriers to make sure that I have better internet access. So I'm having some challenges this afternoon. Uh, but uh, back, back, to you, back to your question. Um, I am, a, as a small business owner, I have two all state insurance practices. Uh, one in Humble Park and one in Bronzeville. Uh, but I think it's important to also uh, note uh, that uh, three of my uh, staffers, agents in my office are part of the LGBTQ, LGBTQ community. Why is that important? Because we could talk about equity, we could talk about folks, uh, but I'm all doing this, which 
which is extremely important. Uh, second, um, from that, you mentioned legislative, my legislative priorities. Uh, about two years ago, I secured funding uh, to. Oh, we don't want to miss that, Representative. Hold on. We um, left you with um, two years ago, you secured funding and we had not heard the rest. So let's give him a second. You know, when it comes to the internet, it's nothing you can do, nothing you can predict. You just don't know when it's going to cooperate or not. Um, so let's definitely bear with him because we certainly want to hear um, this important information. So we, we left off on two years ago. Sure, thank you. Madam, Madam Treasurer, about two years ago, uh, I secured $15 million to build an LGBTQ center on the South Side. Um, and partnering with Howard Brown Health, we have to be able to have access uh, to quality health care. Uh, and partnering with folks like the Center on Halstead, they have been doing amazing work uh, that was discussed today. But we need to make sure that we have a center on the south side and hopefully uh, in your neck of the woods, Treasurer, on the west side. We need to make sure that our folks have access to quality health care. They have access to a place that they can call home, that they can go to and have Jeremy and the LGBTQ Chamber of Commerce come in and do programs around small business. Um, also partnering with city colleges to do GED courses. And so I'm very happy that uh, I have the support of my colleagues to make sure that this dream comes into reality. And then second to that, um, unfortunately, we still are seeing high rates of HIV in the Black LGBTQ community, particularly in our youth. Um, so I've also secured $15 million uh, to go to the African American Response Act. Uh, these funds will go to Black-led organizations that are combating uh, the fight of HIV. I'm very happy that the governor has a plan to get to zero by 2030, but the only way we get to zero by 2030 is that we uh, put money into Black-led organizations that are combating uh, the spread of HIV. I mean, so these are two things uh, that I wanted to talk about, about today, but there's certainly many other legislative uh, things that I have done and my, believe it or not, Madam Treasurer, and my third term in the General Assembly, time is moving. But these are the two uh, main things uh, that I wanted to talk about uh, because we not only, um, talk about legislation, but it's also important to talk about dollars and cents. And you can't do anything, uh, Madam Treasurer, as you know, without making sure that you have the resources to do what you wanna do. And so I think this is important. Uh, why, as I started this conversation, why it's important to have uh, folks like you in office uh, and folks like uh, Senator um, Simmons, who is the first a black a member of our community to serve in the Senate. Uh, we have to have a representation in our community, whether that be in the LGBT community and the black community, uh, representation counts. And so treasurer again, thank you for the opportunity. This is great, great information. Um, certainly from all of our panelists on today. I, I have to tell you representative, when I was listening to Ms. Barnes speaking, I'm like, you all do all of that? On, at the center of Halstead, and, and certainly I appreciate it um, that she said it's for everyone, no matter what side of town, right? But you and I both know, Representative, that unfortunately some people will use convenience as a barrier. Um, and, and so I, we, we certainly appreciate what you're doing, Representative. And, and that's what it's about. A lot of people wonder, why is it so important to elect people like you? Because these are people that understand your struggles and these are people that they should, <laughs> when they go into the legislature or whatever the respective office is, they should be able to do things such as what Representative Robinson is doing. I mean, so phenomenal, right? We wanna put our money where our mouth is and you're talking about investments um, and certainly when you spoke about um, HIV awareness and trying to not only make it awareness, but we need to stop it, to stop the spread. And so um, certainly appreciate your work in that. We don't need to lose our black youth to nothing else. You know, we have enough struggles and there is no need to lose them to this. And so thank you for that. And just really the great work 
that you all are doing. So thank you, very good information representative. And we heard you much better towards the end. So, hey, I guess it was meant for us to hear that important information. <laughs> <laughs> all right, so um, on Money Mondays, we have the opportunity to speak candidly about the inequalities that some members of our communities face. We know that no financial or budgeting advice is really a one size fits all, right? We also know that systemic inequalities make it harder for small businesses to succeed. So what are some of the hidden costs borne by the LGBTQIA plus business owners or by the community at large that everyone watching may not be aware of? And let's start with you, Ms. Barnes, then Representative Robinson and Mr. Holston. Um, yes, thank you. Um, I This is actually the, the really the best place that I wanted to kind of talk about what my experiences have been in starting um, a business. It just one month ago, um, a, my business partner and I opened a cocktail bar in Andersonville um, called Nobody's Darling. And uh, my business partner is also um, a queer black woman. Um, and so it's this we, we've had a lot of questions, right? Of, you know, how, how did you do this? So, you know, open this, you know, place in Andersonville. Um, we were lucky enough uh, to have the uh, requisite capital, right, to, um, you know, acquire the building. Uh, excuse me, acquire the business, um, to have the startup costs, um, to get things up and running, um, and to hire people. That's not typical. Um, you know, when we talk about hidden costs, if you are uh, a woman, uh, if you're black, and if you're queer, it's not too hidden uh, what, you know, what you're going to face, right? It's, there's there's uh, a lot of barriers. Um I think that it is uh, very important um, to, you know, one, make sure that, you know, businesses utilize um, the resources of, you know, whether it's the chamber, um, you know, all of the things that Jeremy talked about, right, you know, in terms of getting businesses or individuals prepared uh, for what they might face. They, you know, these are the things that you kind of have to know. Um, and you also have to know that when you are seeking financing, um, don't take no for um, an answer, right? You know, really kind of understand what you needed to do to get, you know, sort of to, you know, sort of make yourself attractive, right, for financing. Um, but then really push to understand, you know, why you might not get that financing. And then also look at creative ways, right? You know, friends and family. Um, so, you know, we didn't have a background. I'm a corporate attorney. Um, so I definitely had the background in advising businesses for a number of years. Um, and so I kind of understood, you know, a lot of the things that we needed to do. And I, you know, um, and I knew some of the hurdles that we might face if we couldn't, you know, kind of have that, you know, the money to do it. Um, but I do think that it's it's important for us to tell the stories of, you know, if we encounter any issues, um, where are we encountering those issues when there are programs that are designed to help, you know, LGBTQ or, you know, minority businesses? Um, I, I can't tell you if it's any harder for an LGBTQ white male to get a loan than an LGBTQ BIPOC person. But anecdotally, I'm going to say it is right. You know, so it's it's hard to separate those things out. Um, but we need to hold uh, financial institutions accountable. Um, we need to be able to communicate that uh, to you, Madam Treasurer, when we're having issues. Um, and we need to make sure that we're communicating out to the community um, when there are programs that help start these businesses. We're so far, knock on wood, uh, again, everybody's been pent up and you know locked in from the pandemic. We're doing quite well. We welcome everybody to, to come and see us, but, um, but we know that it's just important to make sure we're supporting um, you know, uh, LGBTQ businesses, especially the smaller ones, um, and especially uh, when it's you know, uh, people of color who have kind of jumped into the fray um, to, you know, to, to open these, uh, these businesses. So. Representative. 
Uh, Angela, uh, right on the money. Um, and I just want to share with you that Madam Treasurer and I will be coming to visit you. Um, folks might know that uh, the Treasurer and I um, had an evening at the Jeffrey Pub, uh, the oldest uh, Black or the oldest LGBTQ uh, bar in the country in South Shore. And so uh, I am going to be extending an invite uh, to my friend, Madam Treasurer, Angela, and we are going to come and see you because it's important uh, that we support our, our small businesses. And, and Angela, kudos to you first and foremost. Uh, when I started uh, my Allstate insurance practice in 2007, uh, I had worked uh, at AAA for two years. I had worked for state, excuse me, I'd worked for State Farm for three years. And so I had probably about four and a half years of experience um, managing agents, managing agencies, um, had the, again, had the experience. And when I um, was trying to find financing for my first Allstate insurance practice, I was turned down by three banks. And uh, the unfortunate piece of that is that uh, this happens particularly to those of us that are color on regular uh, on regular occurrences. And, and to Angela's point, I think it's important to also know who your elected officials are, uh, certainly Madam Treasurer and myself, because when you are turned down um, from banks, uh, we might be able to help you. Uh, there are banks that do business with the state and the city. Um, and so there are relationships that we have. And, and if we cannot... Um, if we cannot get that loan approved, at least we might be able to make contact with somebody to be able to share with you, what do you need to do to get approved? When I was turned down by three banks, no one told me work on your credit score. No one told me that you need uh, more years. They just told me flat out no. And so again, that's where it's important to know who your elected officials are and utilize them for help. I'm, I'm, I, I was fortunate enough that um, the agent uh, that I bought the business from, he seller financed the book of business. But that is um, really unheard of. And this agent gave me an opportunity um, to be able to um, buy an agency at, at the time, 600 million in premium, that we have grown to 800, eight, uh, 8 million in premium. And certainly we have been able to get loans after that uh, but unfortunately, I almost um, was not successful because I couldn't get financing. And so again, as to Angela's point, don't give up. Think about creative uh, ways to be able to get financing. That might be uh, going to family and friends, as Angela mentioned. That might be going to the business owner and asking them to sell or finance uh, the business for you. That's something that I did. Uh, but if you uh, are, are serious about starting a business, again, as Angela mentioned, do not give up. There are resources that are out there. Uh, Jeremy with the LGBTQ Chamber is certainly a resource. I wish that I, I um, had uh, the relationship that I had now uh, with the LGBTQ Chamber in 2007. I just learned of this chamber a couple of years ago, but this is why, uh, Madam Treasurer, um, 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 Programs like this, your uh, Monday program is extremely important because we have to get information out. Our community, particularly the Black community, needs to get information. We want to start businesses, but we sometimes don't know where to go. And so I commend you, Madam Treasurer, for putting this together this afternoon again. So, so there's almost barely anything else I feel like I can say after that. Um, <laughs> Uh, so every, I think everything was very much spot on. Uh, first thought, um, so as you all go to uh, visit Angela at her bar, um, I encourage you to do it on a Friday night. Um, that's when you will find one of our other members featured there, Taylor's Tacos. They'll be uh, partnering there on some Fridays. And so um, go for a full experience. Um, so keep that in mind. Um, but other than that, I think a lot of things that they both touched on were things that I were thinking about, you know, really that social capital piece, you know, having that network of people who are um, aware of your business, ready to support your business when it's time for it to open. Um, and really also having some of that experience and sort of being able to be ready and prepared to sort of operate a business. You know, Angela has went into a situation where she, I don't know how many employees she has, but I imagine if it's a bar, she likely has more than three or five. And so now being in a situation where never having owned a bar, um, and now 
having to manage people, put together schedules, put together all these other types of things. And so many people don't necessarily have a lot of the experience um, that they might necessarily need to go into the industries um, where they're wanting to thrive moving forward. Um, I think something else that um, I think one of you touched on and um, Treasury you touched on earlier, um, when it comes to thinking about when our elected officials are, um, you know, even banking folks, when we're thinking about how um, decisions impact small business owners, so very not often those decisions are made with LGBTQ business owners in mind. Um, and so is of course, while it definitely should be, and, um, most of these decisions are made thinking about veterans and women and minority owned businesses, which definitely makes sense. But again, we know for sure that um, black and Latinx and women folks at the intersection of being LGBTQ are definitely double as marginalized from being able to access so many resources in terms of capital, um, in terms of education, in terms of housing. So um, when we're not thinking about LGBTQ folks, when we're making these decisions, um, we're definitely um, creating opportunities where these folks will not be able to take advantage of them. Um, so I think that is for sure one where we're not seeing some opportunity. And then as I mentioned, one resource that we help LGBTQ business owners get connected to is the LGBT Business Enterprise Certification. Right now, we know that about two thirds of Fortune 500 companies actively recognize LGBTQ owned businesses in their supplier diversity programs, um, but there's still so much growing room. Um, at this moment, there's only a handful of municipal governments that actively recognize and include LGBTQ owned businesses in their supplier diversity programs. Um, and we know that these are valuable tools in being able to help LGBTQ businesses um, to be able to grow, to be able to get access to opportunities, to contracts, to be able to hire people. And so, again, when we live in cities and states that are not designed to um, support a growing uh, community of LGBTQ owned businesses, um, we're, we're saying that we don't want your business here to go to another state, to go to another city. And so we need to be more proactive in making sure that we're living in a city, a county and state that is saying, hey, you as an LGBTQ owned business, we value the taxes that you pay here. We value the many people that you employ here. We wanna make sure that uh, we're creating opportunities that, um, that benefit you as well. And so those are for sure two opportunities. Um, in addition to the many that both of um, Angela and Representative Robinson touched on, I think are some opportunities where we can definitely see uh, some more access. Wow. So listening to all of you speak about just the challenges and we talk about costs and financing, which is a big one, right? You have these great ideas and you've worked hard. I mean, the experiences that, that you've had, Ms. Barnes, Representative Robinson, and then you go to open up another business and the financing is on halt. And you're like, wait, what's going on? Why, what's the problem? And just fortunately for you, you both were able to overcome, but so many other, and I appreciate the encouragement because so many others that, hey, before today, Mr. Holston didn't even know about the LGBT Chamber of Commerce, right, for Illinois. I'm so glad they can hear what their options are. You are helping prepare them to open up their business or helping to expand in the financing, but people need to know to not accept no. And that's hard because, I, you know, I'll say, right, as, as Black people, how we're raised, I don't necessarily know if we're raised like that because we're actually raised that, you know, this is to be expected. And so now we have to change that, right? We have to teach our, our kids that that's not acceptable, that you don't have to accept no. There are resources out there. I mean, you all, this is great. We have to change the dynamic here. Yeah. So I appreciate that. Do not accept no. And we definitely have to hold these financial institutions accountable. We know that. And so, you know, certainly I am no stranger to what is going on. So thank you very, very much. Um, and a quick reminder to those that are listening, I haven't even looked at the chat on Facebook yet. We'll see if there's any questions. I know it's such a great conversation. We're just involved. Um, but if there's any questions, please let us know. Now, last year, the Supreme Court ruled in the Bostic versus Clayton County that the LGBTQIA plus 
people are protected against discrimination in the workplace under the Civil Rights Act. This was a welcome and surprising ruling for the court to take such a strong stance against discrimination based on sexual orientation and gender identity at work. But we also know there's a lot more work to be done. What changes would you like to see that would make our workplaces more welcoming and inclusive? This is a great question. Let's start with you, Mr. Holston, Ms. Barnes, and then um, concluding with Representative Robinson. Sure. So I think, you know, um, definitely there's so much more progress um, ahead of us, but, you know, it's been great to see sort of where we've made, you know, some limited progress thus far. Um, I think one space that, you know, across all sort of diversity, um, we hear so many companies talking about, you know, recruitment and, and having, you know, a diverse workforce. One of the many challenges I think that still lies ahead of us is really um, not only the recruitment piece, but making sure that we're doing a great job of elevating these people to uh, senior and manager uh, leadership roles. And so one opportunity where I'm hopeful um, we'll see some some things shift because of it is um, Senate Bill 1730 that was passed here um, in Illinois um, that was also co-sponsored co by Representative Robinson where um, we are asking corporate companies to start reporting the LGBTQ represent representation of their corporate uh, board members and so making it more aware of, of who uh, uh, makes up the LGBTQ identities on their board. And so um, if there isn't any, uh, we now know that. If there is some, we now know that it can, 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 and can support those companies um, more proactively. And so my hope is that um, once we're able to get uh, Governor Prisker to sign uh, Senate Bill 1730, is that we'll see an opportunity where more corporations here in Illinois will uh, proactively seek to uh, recruit uh, and onboard uh, LGBTQ business voices to some of these corporate boards. And then hopefully um, we'll see some of these voices make an impact in how uh, companies are engaging uh, and bringing uh, and, and sort of recruiting LGBTQ folks to leadership positions. And also just generally LGBTQ and diversity across the board. Um, we've seen um, where um, LGBTQ um, action takes place that tends to bring up a, about more diversity for other groups as well because of intersectionality. And so um, our hope is that this will allow for fuller diversity um, for LGBTQ folks, for people of color, for women, um, in terms of hiring, in terms of engagement, best practices, and really just overall consumer engagement as well. And so um, I'm really excited about what that means for workplaces and also how decisions will be made as they impact the LGBTQ employees and consumers. And so looking forward to what that means for us um, as we move forward. Um, yeah, I honestly, I really do echo um, what uh, Jeremy is saying. It, it's so critical um, that senior leadership um, in organizations, whether they're nonprofit organizations, whether for-profit companies, um, it, you know, that you have that representation, that LGBTQ representation, that you have the intersectionality, um, you have people of color. Um, I think that, you know, uh, Representative uh, Robinson is, um, you know, the example, right, of uh, if you have uh, people in positions of power who are, um, you know, who are part of the community, and they understand the challenges of those communities, um, then you, the decisions that are being made are going to be far more impactful um, and support you know, uh, uh, those communities. Being in you know, a workplace environment uh, when you're LGBTQ, um, is it's it's different for a lot of uh, different you know segments of our uh, community. Um, but I think that what resonates is making sure that um, that we feel welcome, that we feel that there isn't any uh, that there aren't any barriers to advancement, um, and that you know some of the unique. Uh, 
issues that we might have, uh, family, whatever else it is, um, are being uh, considered and uh, taken seriously. And, you know, and that we're not being, you know, sort of diminished or, or dismissed. So um, I'm, you know, all for, right, you know, making sure we push for uh, that representation in, in uh, positions of power. I think that Angela hit it right on the point uh, when we talk about barriers. And so thank you, Angela. Um, our corporate folks, um, you know, should, should make sure that uh, when they're talking about equity, uh, that we show up in that conversation, um, that there are no barriers to the LGBT community. And then also that we are, that those corporations and I, I, um, partner with one or work for one, and that's the Allstate Corporation. Uh, I, I'll use them as an example of that. We're making sure that we're showing up in the C-suite um, and that we have, uh, we have opportunities for them to advance. Personally, uh, as a small business owner, uh, I, uh, one of my managers uh, that had been with me for eight years has gone on to open up his own Allstate insurance practice. He is uh, part of the LGBT community, a member of the LGBT community. And so again, if I can do that as a small business owner, uh, corporations like Allstate uh, and other corporations uh, should be able to do that as well. And, and then to, to Jeremy's point, uh, we talked about a little bit earlier, uh, really getting at creating opportunities for us to be able uh, to come in as it, as it relates to contracts, as it relates to procurement. We want jobs, certainly, but we also want opportunities that we can create jobs. And so that's important as well, because when we create jobs, we're creating wealth for not only ourselves, but we're creating wealth for our community as well. And so, uh, Madam Treasurer, what I would like to see again, as Angela, to Angela's point, that there are no barriers for us to be able to rise up the, the corporate ladder, so to speak, or and 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 to uh, crack those glass ceilings, but then also creating opportunities for procurement. Uh, those are two things that I, I think that we should be able to do without not a lot of fanfare, and we should be able to do that uh, moving forward. Uh, those are the two things that I would like to see, Madam Treasurer. Thank you for the question. That's awesome. Um, wow. All right. I mean, we have literally talked for almost an hour and it just done, this has been phenomenal. Um, so I do have one last question before we wrap up on today. Um, how can, and I think this is an appropriate question, um, how can we support the LGBTQIA plus community of Chicago all year round? We know this is Pride Month, but how can we support the community all year round? Um, and so this is um, a question again for everyone, starting with you, Ms. Barnes, Representative Robinson, and then we'll go to Mr. Holston to complete our segment today. Uh, certainly, thank you. Certainly to, um, to indicate how we can support um, the community, um, the business owners in particular, uh, shop local. Um, you know, shop small businesses um, and, you know, honestly, give constructive feedback. Like I always say, if you're a small business um, and, you know, you go in and something isn't right or, you know, you wish it was give that feedback um, in a in a really constructive way and, you know, you will get a response. So, you know, just be supportive and, uh, and be patient. Angela, I would agree, uh, supporting businesses like Angela's um, uh, bar, supporting uh, my Allstate uh, insurance practices. Um, but then also, uh, Madam Treasurer, when you are at the dining room table or you are at a family gathering um, and with hanging out with friends and someone is uh, um, um, repeating or um, saying a, a, a joke about the LGBT community or utilizing a slur, uh, how you can support our community is by um, stopping that foolishness when it comes up. That is another way that I think is important. Uh, many of us in our community, if you are listening in, are respected. 
um, in our in our in our our friend base and our family base. But we have to speak up when we know things are not right. Um, when people are saying things that are inappropriate, stop it in its tracks. Let folks know that that's inappropriate. That's another way that you can support our community because this is a continual uh, thing that happens and, and our kids continue to do that, but we can shut this down now. Um, and so I think that is important to note as it relates to Pride Month and as it relates to supporting the Pride community 365 years, 365 days a year, Madam Treasurer. I think that that's an important note as well. Indeed, uh, agree with both of those uh, comments. Uh, money all around is a great uh, option. So as a customer, uh, being able to shop with these businesses um, as uh, municipal governments, as corporations, being able to invest in these businesses are things that we can definitely do all year round. Um, again, we can be sure to um, champion LGBTQ businesses to our elected officials. Again, making sure that when they're making uh, decisions that impact the LGBTQ folks or business owners that they're thinking about LGBTQ TQ communities um, with these decisions in mind. Um, so definitely both of those, I think, are some great ways. Um, yeah, so continue to support and to be a champion and to be a partner. And of course, for sure, uh, being a mentor, um, you know, as we've kind of talked about so many folks, um, you know, Across communities, you know, we see so many people open up a business out of passion, and oftentimes they may not necessarily have a lot of the day-to-day the -day insights to be able to move that business forward. And so where you have some expertise or some skills that you can uh, provide to these businesses, definitely reach out to provide some mentorship. Um, that way we can also make sure that our business community is continuing to thrive and to grow. Then you can always sponsor someone to be a member of our local LGBT Chamber of Commerce. And so um, definitely, um, again, if you are a business owner, if you are in the early stage of thinking I might have a cool idea but I don't know what to do with it, um, or whether you employ over 150 people. Um, we'd love to be a partner in helping you get connected and learning and networking. Um, and so I'm super excited and thankful to have been here today and look forward to building relationships with everyone here and making sure that our LGBTQ community continues to grow and thrive. So thank you so much, everyone. So an important point, a few points I want to make as we conclude. Number one, um, certainly Representative Robertson, you already know I'm going to take you up on that offer and we'll be up to see Ms. Barnes soon, um, especially now that Mr. Holson said they got taco night. I mean, how could I ever pass something like that? <laughs> All right. So second, um, that I think that was such an important point that you made, Representative Robertson, about when you're sitting around the table with others and you hear things. You know, that reminds me of how racism begins. You know, it's from what you hear. Mm -hmm. And so that's, that's an interesting point when you say to just stop the conversations that you know are not right. That, that was just very well received, Representative. So thank you for that. Um, and I just have to tell you all, phenomenal panel on today. I mean, so many resources out here that people may not have necessarily known about great work that is happening from the um, Chamber of Com LGBT Chamber of Commerce of Illinois Center on Halston. And then of course, in the legislature, Representative Robinson, of course, he's a small business owner as well, but just really great work that you all are doing. And we appreciate that. And, and certainly I think that you all are doing a phenomenal job, continue to keep up the great work. And we look forward to having you back to talk more um, and certainly this hour was very well spent for myself and hopefully, I, and I know we got some good comments for those that were able to attend. Um, so for those that attended, really big thanks to you. And we'll be sharing notes and materials via email. So don't worry if you register. And if you did not have an opportunity to register, please go to our website if you need some information from any of the panelists that are here today. Go to our website, chicagocitytreasurer.com where you can be able to sign up for our emails and we'll be able to send out information to you. Um, continue to follow us on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, and LinkedIn. We always got stuff going on in the Chicago Treasurer's Office, so be certain 
to not only follow us at Money Mondays with Melissa, but just all the things that we have going on. So thank you very much. And everyone, enjoy the rest of your day. Thank you again to our esteemed panel.